Can these games go right up here on the cooler? Top of the morning, friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? Get your cocoa blocks. We are going on a little journey. It is, well, it's pretty bad here in California right now, but we're, we're leaving. We're not even leaving because of how horrendous the smoke is because it doesn't matter where we go in California, which is where we're not leaving. It's bad. But. But we are delivering a snake and we take our snake delivery pretty serious around here. Stop for some tacos. Looky, looky. <coughs> checky, checky. Snakey, snakey. In there. We're out of here. Awesome. This is Chris. Picked up this beautiful girl right here. Um, you want to take her out, give her a look? Sure, sure. I uh, leave a loose end right here. All you have to do is do a little pop, and that thing pops right off. Nice. Wow, she looks amazing. That's awesome, man. I love her colors. She's real light. Yeah, I almost, I almost thought she was a fire for a second, but then yeah. it's just. It's, it's, it's not. I don't think she is, but it's just that maybe that head pied is being so influential on her that... It's coming, coming it's out in the just, color, yeah. yeah. the contrast and the color is just looking real good. For whatever reason, the last time I dropped off a snake to somebody was in a Whole Foods parking lot. Now, I'm not saying that if you live in California and you get a snake from me that I'm going to do hand-to-hand -hand deliveries like this all the time. <laughs> but the chance for that to happen does go up exponentially, so... Californians, that's that's what it is. All right, it worked out perfect. <laughs> you guys have a good trip. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> nice to meet you. You too, bro. Thanks. Take care. Nice yeah, to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Bye. All right, guys, we're out of here. It's a wild Jay Brewer. You know, we couldn't leave California and not see Jay. But hey, that's what they say, but nobody ever wants to hang out here. Look, it's empty. <laughs> There's nobody else here I know anywhere. Oh, that's why we're able to do what we're gonna do. So these are little baby Gaboon Vipers that, don't ask me how, the mom and dad have been hanging out with each other for decades, never did anything, and all of a sudden, bam! Out came all these little babies. So this was completely un unintentional uh, here at the reptile zoo so anyway look at all these crazy guys they're all over the place little mini me's of mom and dad so if you can imagine this these guys already have fangs that are over half inch long their parents have the longest fangs in the world because they're gaboon vipers so they have the longest venomous fang in the world not to mention they have giant heads full of huge amount of venom luckily the venom isn't as dangerous as some snakes but when you add up the quantity of it, you don't want to get bit. So these are these are all basically invasive species in California, something you don't want to own anyway, in my opinion. I thought I would just show all these, but let's go look at the parents. Who wants to see the parents? I want to see the parents. So that's mom. She's absolutely gorgeous. Now, they're really fast at striking, but the good news is these have been raised from babies in captivity. They look like a rhino viper in some ways because they're so closely related. I think at one point the two were 
actually named similar names. And uh, look at that. This one's got two horns. And the Gaboon Viper has two horns also, but a little bit different. Boy, she really wants to come towards me. Come on. You can see the colors. Just gorgeous. Now, the funny part is the male is completely different. I've got to be careful because they are fast, and he's not as tame. Now, you see this is actually a venomous hook, which is meant to catch their head. So guess what? He can't strike left or right if he's in that hook, right? Because he, he can go forward, but he can't come left or right really fast. So that makes it safer. They have very long fangs, so I'm sure they eat a lot of birds, and birds have feathers and all that you know, barrier before you actually get to their skin. But when you consider they can have up to inch and half, inch and three quarter fangs, they're incredibly, incredibly, boy, it would be something if he yawned for us, huh? <laughs> nah, maybe we'll get a double drinker. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Look at that. Home run, guys. That's amazing. Girls, gals, and all those kids out there, I hope you're enjoying this. I just want you to know these are not toys. These are really beautiful animals, but they're very dangerous, highly venomous, and very good for education because they have so many incredible things about them. And because, of course, they're so beautiful on top of it, doesn't it make you want to protect animals? Because that's the idea of what we like to do is... What do you guys think? Is this cool or what? We're, of course, we're at the Reptile Zoo in Fountain Valley, and uh, dang, we have a lot of cool stuff here, and I'm happy that I'm part of this. How's that nice little treat, guys? We're out of here. That's good. Good, Matt. Oh, I'm at my buddy Matt Bernardin's house, and full disclosure, I uh, was having pain, so I took a pain pill, and I think it's starting to kick in. But I want to show you guys some snakes. Cool with that? Red Eye Croc Skink. And check out this chunky hog nose snake. She was putting on more of a show for us earlier. She doesn't want to put on a show anymore. Beautiful. We got this rainbow boa that is deep in shed and also has just one eye. This is a rescue. Rainbow boa for your mind, oh boa that you find, oh boa. Where are you? Aloha! Ooh, I needed that, man. I think that you've helped me help it wear off a little bit. I'm here with Adam Halblieb, Beach What's Bum that? Exotics. We're about to film the uh, Unfiltered Reptiles podcast over here, or do it live. Did I say Unfiltered Reptiles? Did I say Reptiles Unplugged? Oh, shit. I think you said Unfiltered. Son of a bitch. I didn't even uh, catch it. Freaking MJ. <laughs> yeah. Like, when he told me the name of his show, I'm like... Cool name, bro. And he's like, you really think so? I'm like, yeah. Can't you tell? And he's like, what is it? Too close to yours? I'm like, you tell me. Are you filming right now? Yes. yes. <laughs> Reptiles unplugged. Super dwarf, orange ghost stripe right here. And then we've got a pretty cool golden child, pos hat, orange ghost stripe, but. Look how orange that is. I think she'll prove out. Yeah, I think that snake's gonna prove out. I think so too. And you guys missed all the blood. She was just latched on. We had to use the uh, corn cob method, so thanks, Garrett. Bamboo spot nose puzzle. Miguel and I have a leopard Mojave het, let's see, leopard Mojave het puzzle het hypo, I wanna say is in that boy too. Now we know we may get some white snakes, but I think the risk of bringing leopard in is, is good. And if any white snakes pop out, we'll just keep them back. Dude, time. that is a Big Huge ass desert goat. Holy dude, what on earth are you feeding that thing? <laughs> Huge, right? So she gets uh two smalls normally or or a medium, and that's all she eats. Once wow. once a week. I'll even stretch them the ten to fourteen days sometimes. That is a big and beautiful snake right there. Yeah. Dude. She's locked up multiple times with uh this boy. And that is a sterling puzzle. Wow, dude. So we hope. I mean, dude, all in all, they've had over a dozen locks. And for whatever reason, man, she just doesn't want to drop eggs. So that's why I've actually backed off her feeding regimen. 
um, to see maybe if she's too overweight and just doesn't want to produce. That could be a thing. That could be a thing for sure. She's huge. She's huge, right? Like a beast of a ball python beast. right there, let alone a gizzard ghost. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Give me five. Yes. Good job. We need to take this piece of glass now. What do you know? I know I found a piece of the hard grass and I'm about to go bye bye. That's all I know. I had a feeling this would be a little far for her. Oh, she's ridden further than this when we go to the high school and stuff. Way longer. <laughs> Look at Hillary carrying the bike and the baby. And no, the water. Want, I wouldn't be caught dead doing nothing like that. <laughs> well, yeah, right. No, not the well, she was just stopped. She got off her bike. She's like, I'm done. What am I gonna do? She can ride. Huh? Look at her, she's running. She's not tired. She's tired of riding. Hey, Noah. What? What do you know? I know ponds. What about ponds? That we're in one related to a pond called a lake. Oh. oh. And yeah. I just broke my best stick. Hey, Leah Moon. What? What do you know? I know about um, in the water. What about in the water? And Anim what about animals in the water? That they're so beautiful. A phone in the water. They're so beautiful? A phone dick in the water. I know I've waxed and waned about the idea of leaving California and I don't see it happening for us really. We've got so much family out here and we spend a lot of time with our family out here down here in Southern California up in the Bay a lot of time. So it, it's not like we just see our family every now and then. We see our family all the time and it's a very important part of our lives. It's tough to say because a lot of the people I look up to in social media that, that do things and, and produce content that a lot of people, there's people leaving California. It's a thing, like it's actually happening. People are fed up with some of the things, the way things are going here. And I, I totally get that. Obviously I've, I've mentioned it before here on this channel. Um, but the way I look at it, if we just leave and run from problems, does that solve anything? Then what is California gonna be? A bunch of whoever decided that I, I, no, we're not leaving. We're staying. And maybe that'll change in the future if it gets unbearable, but I, I say I say we stay. <laughs>